Rescue TV, and we're here with Robert Holden. One of the world's, are you the world's only PhD in happiness? Oh no, not now. No, hopefully not. Hopefully so, not. Hopefully so now it's loads. exploded, exploded. Yeah. Well, one of the world's first doctorates in happiness. What are some of the things that you think that you know an enlightened state mm. can can bring to its people? I think we have to start by understanding better what an illness really is. Because you know, um, for instance, let's talk about depression for a moment. Which is huge. It's, it's huge. Suddenly yeah. everyone's got it. Well, here's the thing. <laughs> it's a it's a pretty useless diagnosis for a start. Why? Because when you well, it's so general. Right. Let's start with that. How general is depression? Yeah, it's a blanket. Also, yeah, it's just a blanket statement. I'm depressed apparently. Well, what does that even mean? Also, Try and feel depression. It's not even a feeling. It's just a word we use. It is not even a feeling of depression. If you feel into depression, you start to feel other things. Maybe loneliness. Oh, we can deal with loneliness. You know, or meaninglessness. Oh, great, we can deal with meaninglessness. So you're you talking about breaking down the sub-tentacles of the word depression. Understand, understand these conditions better. Right. Because you see, the thing is, the moment we label them, all we then do normally is medicate for them. That's and that's true. not really understanding them. So you know, the first thing is, let's understand that experience a little bit more before we, you know, before we even medicate for it. Let's try and understand it. But also, we have to, we, we have to take off this idea that these things are bad. Um, in, in, in our form of medicine that we're practicing at the moment, we, we make every illness a bad thing. But actually they're not always. Sometimes physical illnesses that happen to the body are just the body releasing. It's a releasing that's happening. It's not anything bad that's happening. The body is cleansing itself. Similarly, when we are, for instance, depressed, sometimes that's our being telling us we're not being authentic. For instance, okay. we could be more true to ourselves. That's a physical reaction to something that we're kind of out of kilter with. It's it, well, yeah, or an emotional well, reaction sorry, too. Exactly. Emotion. Yes. yes. So in other words, look, let's let's not make depression wrong or bad. Let's understand it better, and and let's start to to work with it in a way. And the model I was taught was that let's get through all of the problems of your life, and then you can be happy. Now, like the hallelujah model. Yeah. Now, I guess, you know, I don't know how many times in your life you've never had a problem. I mean, we've always got problems. Sure. So instead of actually looking at happiness at the end of your life or at the end of no problems, what if actually we just said, look, I'm in the middle of my life. There are problems. And I'm going to study happiness. What if I started to look at happiness now? Because if I look at happiness now, maybe that actually will help me to even understand my problems better because a lot of the problems we go through are actually the effect of not being happy of not being true to ourselves so that was my model it was to say look i know your life's not perfect right now let's talk about happiness what have you learned about happiness in your life are you being true to those lessons have you really really learned them what is life asking you about happiness right now if life was trying to teach you something about happiness right now what is it trying to teach you so in other words, really using happiness as like your spiritual path now, as your learning curve now. And what I found would happen was, as people got clearer about happiness, their problems clear. 